There have been movie franchises with impressive cast lists before, and there will be in the future, but it's hard to imagine any quite being able to match the sheer star power of the Harry Potter world. If you think of a big British acting name, chances are they had a role to play at Hogwarts. Within the cast list the size of your arm, there came different dynamics and even some demands from the actors themselves. These ranged from major changes to the characters they were playing to something as little as a background aesthetic that would probably be missed by the majority of the audience. So with that in mind then, I'm Ellie with What Culture here with 10 most unusual demands made by Harry Potter actors. Number 10. Jason Isaacs changed Lucius Malfoy's aesthetic. There have been a plethora of bad guys introduced to the world of Harry Potter over the years with varying success. One of the most evil and downright detestable is the wizarding supremacist Lucius Malfoy. His evil sneer and vicious stance even towards children was brought to life expertly by Jason Isaacs, but it wasn't just the villain's on-screen presence that the actor had a hand in. After seeing the initial design for the Death Eater, he had a handful of changes he wanted to make to truly stamp his mark on the franchise. In the first instance, before Isaac's input, Malfoy was to sport short brown hair and a pinstripe suit, something that was changed by the actor immediately. To up the ante and pure evil of the despised villain, he was given his trademark long blonde locks as well as his cane, also at the actor's suggestion. Isaacs joining the franchise that already housed Alan Rickman, the face behind several infamous villains such as Hans Gruber and the Sheriff of Nottingham, decided his antagonist needed to have something different to truly set him apart in the wizarding world. And it's fair to say that his changes certainly helped in this department. Number 9. Ray Fiennes wanted a hook on Voldemort's wand. Not only is Lord Voldemort the main villain for the Harry Potter series, but he has gone on to become one of the most iconic cinematic villains of an entire generation. Even if you haven't seen the movies, you know the name. Naturally, a lot went into the creation of such a character and his look was designed and brought to life on the big screen, but Ray Fiennes was still able to bring something more to the table than merely his incredible talent. Much of the former Tom Riddle's appearance was based around the aesthetic of a snake, a theme that is present throughout the entire franchise. Fiennes wished to add to that with Voldemort's movements and so requested a specially made wand to make it happen. Simply, there was a small hook added to the character's trademark wand that allowed the actor to hold it while moving his hand more fluidly in something of a slithering motion without having to close his hand around it. This was just one of the many, many details that went into making Lord Voldemort as memorable and iconic as he came to be. Number 8. Daniel Radcliffe's Sleeping Bag Placement Some of the demands on this list come from huge name actors who wanted to improve the movie or their character with an idea or a suggestion. This one, however, comes from a young boy whose request had absolutely nothing to do with the movie itself. Instead, this came in the name of fancying one of his co-stars. There is a scene in The Prisoner of Azkaban where the students of Hogwarts are littered across the floor in sleeping bags with Daniel Radcliffe using the opportunity to ask to be placed next to the girl he had a crush on at the time. We've all been there, head over heels and willing to do anything just for a conversation. But the story gets so much better when you add the fact that Alan Rickman and Michael Gambon were even more immature than the young star. Radcliffe had his wish granted and was in position when Dumbledore and Snake walked past and activated the fart machine they had hidden in Radcliffe's sleeping bag. Perhaps he wished he was further away from the girl when those noises started coming from his general area. Number 7. Alan Rickman's Rules Surrounding His Car with the school setting of the Harry Potter series, there came the balance of young actors and seasoned veterans of the profession. There was still some excellent chemistry between these two groups, but of course there were struggles as well. Working with children brings with it a certain amount of challenges, whether it be childish behaviour, the forgetting of lines, or the kind of attention span that can send some kids into a frenzy. Alan Rickman found a certain difficulty with two of the Hogwarts students while filming The Order of the Phoenix. By the time the fifth movie came along, Rupert Grint and Matthew Lewis were less boys and more growing into young men, and while this may have stopped some of the childish behaviour, there will always be a mischievous side to them at this age. In this instance, it was spilling milkshake on Rickman's car. This resulted in the two receiving a ban from the Snape actor of being within five metres of his brand new BMW. The fact that Rickman himself was a wonderful man suggests that this was done more in jest than anything else, but you certainly wouldn't have wanted to tell 
test this theory, would you? Number 6. Jason Isaacs asked for Lucius Malfoy to be released from prison. It can potentially be a double-edged sword when an actor joins a still-growing franchise. Of course, there is every chance of the series taking off, much like the Harry Potter series ultimately did, but at the same time, there is no guarantee that a particular character will stick around. When The Philosopher's Stone released in cinemas, the book series had only been released as far as The Goblet of Fire. Similarly, when Jason Isaacs joined the franchise for The Chamber of Secrets, no further source material had made it onto the shelves. As the books eventually did continue to release, the actor playing Lucius Malfoy was disheartened that his character's role was being so diminished by being incarcerated. So much so that he didn't see himself returning to the franchise at all until he actually met J.K. Rowling in person. Isaacs essentially ambushed the author and begged for his character to be released and given a bigger role in the final book. To this request, Rowling promised Malfoy would not only be released in the first chapter of The Deathly Hallows, he would have a big role to play in the final book. Isaacs signed up to the movie immediately. Number 5. Emma Thompson and Helena Bonham Carter couldn't work at the same time. By and large, the cast of Harry Potter gelled and worked like a well-oiled machine for the duration of the franchise. That much is evident by the reunion special released at the beginning of 2022, and the fact that the likes of Emma Watson and Rupert Grint are still so close after all these years. However, this is one of the largest casts in recent memory, and it would be all but impossible for absolutely everyone to get along. In fact, hidden within the talented group of actors was a painful love triangle that affected who could and couldn't be on set at certain times. The three actors in question are Emma Thompson, Helena Bonham Carter and Kenneth Branagh, who played Professor Trelawney, Bellatrix Lestrange and Gilderoy Lockhart, respectively. Branagh and Thompson's marriage ultimately came to an end when the former had an affair with Helena Bonham Carter years before the Harry Potter franchise ever began. In terms of working on the movies, this didn't affect Branagh's time on set as he was the only one of the three to appear in the Chamber of Secrets. However, due to their history, for the filming of The Deathly Hallows Part 2, Emma Thompson only came onto set on the days Helena Bonham Carter did not. Number 4. Emma Watson asked for more books in Hermione's bedroom. For the most part, the casting department for the Harry Potter movie series knocked their job out of the park. Almost every character was perfectly cast, but none more so than the golden trio – Daniel Radcliffe, Emma Watson and Rupert Grint. The trio embodied their characters when they were first cast and over the course of their childhoods got to know them better than anyone else. Arguably the greatest example of this was Emma Watson. Her considering leaving the franchise to pursue her education is surely the most Hermione thing she could have done, right? One of the most infamous and important Hermione scenes in the entire franchise comes at the beginning of The Deathly Hallows, when she obliviates her parents to protect them. This was the first real look of the Granger's home in the franchise, and Emma Watson immediately saw that it wasn't quite right. Upon seeing her character's bedroom, Watson observed that there should be more books than were originally there, given just how much Hermione loved to read. Of course, she was correct, and the set designers responded to her wish straight away. Number 3. Emma Watson didn't want to hug Rupert Grint or Daniel Radcliffe. Part of the appeal of the Harry Potter movie franchise, arguably the biggest part of the appeal, is the relationship and chemistry shared between the golden trio of Harry Potter, Hermione Granger and Ron Weasley. This stretches to the actors as well, but it wasn't always perfectly smooth sailing. Remembering that for the majority of the filming they were still children, they were asked to do a lot of things that may have made them feel awkward or embarrassed. One such incident came at the conclusion of the Chamber of Secrets, where Hermione was supposed to sprint across the Great Hall and hug both Harry and Ron. The young Emma Watson was simply mortified that director Chris Columbus would ask her to do something like this in front of everyone, and so they settled on a hug for Daniel and an awkward handshake with Rupert instead. Even the hug itself lasted less than a second to spare Watson any more embarrassment than necessary, and had to be made to seem longer in post-production by freezing the shot for a couple of seconds. Number 2. Daniel Radcliffe's parents were against filming in Prague 
With actors so young on the film sets of Harry Potter, often they were too young to truly make decisions for themselves. There were, of course, times that the youngsters' parents got involved and made demands on behalf of their famous kids. There was talk after the release of The Goblet of Fire for the Harry Potter franchise to be moved to the Czech Republic. Based in Prague and able to boast the fact that the first Mission Impossible movie was shot there, Barandov Studios would have potentially seen a huge boost by introducing the production of The Order of the Phoenix. However, with a soon-to-be 16-year-old son, the parents of Daniel Radcliffe took a strong stance opposing such a move. Understandably concerned about their son's life in the limelight, they reportedly felt a move to the Czech Republic would be the wrong thing for young Radcliffe. The main reason was to keep him away from Prague's growing reputation for the sex industry. It's easy to see why this demand was made, and luckily Radcliffe's clout extended enough to his parents that the movie stayed in the UK. Number 1. Ray Fiennes didn't want a prosthetic nose Now, we have already discussed the serpentine aesthetic of Lord Voldemort when he debuted in The Goblet of Fire through to his death in The Deathly Hallows Part 2, but this goes far deeper than just the way he holds his wand. More so than the milky white skin tone and the bald head, the most striking part of Voldemort's appearance is the fact that he lacks a nose. Ray Fiennes, of course, does not lack a nose, and so movie magic had to happen in order to bring the look to life. The two general options for this would have been practical effects, removing the nose through the use of relatively heavy prosthetics, or CGI effects, in which the actor's nose would simply be removed from the shots in post-production. Fiennes made sure it was the latter. A fantastic actor, Ray Fiennes didn't want a prosthetic nose getting in the way of his process, and so he made sure his face was unimpeded to allow himself his full facial range while bringing the terrifying villain to life. And that concludes our list. If you can think of any other examples that we missed, then do let us know in the comments below. And while you're there, don't forget to like and subscribe and tap that notification bell. Also, head over to Twitter and follow us there, at WhatCulture, and I can be found across various social medias just by searching Ellie Little Child. I've been Ellie with What Culture. I hope you have a magical day, and I'll see you real soon.